Hey everybody, I am so excited again for another day. I do have to tell you from the beginning, you can see in here, um, I'm, I'm a little bit symptoma symptomatic today. I've got some breathing and some kind of gut going on. So I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. It doesn't matter. Just know that the energy you can't see in my physical body today, uh, that physical energy in my spirit is still there. My heart's jumping for joy. My mind is jumping to joy. And my spirit is jumping in joy. So I'm just giving my body a chance to let the other parts of me be joyful. And I'm going to let my body just rest. Um, we have a really unique one today. I'm sure it may not be a new concept to any of you, but when you put it all together, it makes an identity that you want to hold on to fast and, and, and deeply. You want to, you just want to hold fast to that. All right, well, let's pray and then let's get started. Father, I just want to thank you so much for this time together to be able to share your word. God, we are here to get any morsel that you want to feed us from your word. And God, we're here to also fall in love with, with your word. So God, overwhelm us with that beautiful awakening in our hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, today, <laughs> today is entitled, I am fingerprinted. Um, hopefully that'll make sense throughout this. I'm not sure. My brain works a little different than most people, but for me, these portions of scripture, what I hear God saying, is remember, once again, we are here to learn what, who God says I am. So that's the most important thing is who God says I am. Not who Jackie's telling you you are. Not for any relative or leader. It is solely based on who God says we are. So today, in my interpretation, I believe God is saying that I am fingerprinted. Have any of you ever had to be fingerprinted? Um, my husband and I worked for Children's Services uh, for years as, as foster family and adoptive family. And I don't know why, but we would often have to go down and get our fingerprints more than once. Like somehow like in the next couple years, my fingerprints wouldn't be the same or, or what. But whatever the reason is, it was a common practice to be fingerprinted. As the children in our home became older, when they reached a certain age, in order for us to continue being a foster home, they would have to go get fingerprinted. So there is fingerprints going on all over the place. But what I realized is it is not just the fingerprints, but it's why those fingerprints are recorded. I'm going to tell you about a sweet son. I no longer see him. And, and I don't even know if he'd count himself as still in our family group. We had him for several years. He was older, um, beautiful boy. And him and his son came to live with us for, for a long time. Um, and when he went to go get his fingerprints taken, a record came up. So when we checked his fingerprints, we found something that was ugly from his past. Because of that, Children's Services wouldn't let either him stay or us get others. Well, we made the choice at that point we were going to continue to support this young man. This idea of being fingerprinted can be an amazing, I mean, really, seriously, an amazing thing because it's unique, it's it's personal, it is just yours. Or this idea of being fingerprinted can be very scary because if there's a lot behind in your past, it might show up in the fingerprints, okay? Now, all that to just start and see what you think. All right, we notice in Genesis, we've, we've had a couple in Genesis already, but if you notice in Genesis, if you look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, oops, I lost something there. I want to read it to you because I, I, I want you to see, we're not looking at the image today. 
we're looking at another thing, but I want you to be able to see it. And then God said, let us make. Now I want you to put a, a little circle around that or underline it or take a note on it, but that is an extremely important word today. Let us make man in our image according to our, our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Okay, so in 26, I want you to underline made. And in 27, I want you to underline create. Um, you know, when, when you go to school, your, your English instructor tells you not to say the same kind of word in each paragraph. You know, find as many words as you can to describe rather than just one. Well, I don't think God is making a mistake in this verse 27 of it. You know, changing words midstream. Um, I think he is very intentional about what he's saying here. He is saying make and create. Now, if you go to Facebook, Jot and Tittle, you're going to find an exercise today of why that is so important. And I'm going to take you on a little bit of journey. If you, if you follow the instructions, you're going to be able to find that meaning on your own. So I'm so excited for you guys to leave me a comment at what you were able to find. Now, I want us to go now, if you don't mind, I want us to go to chapter 2, verse 7, and then we're going to jump to verses 21 and 22. So you ready? Here we go. Verse 7 in chapter 2. Then the Lord God formed, okay, underline that, mark it, formed man out of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. All right, let's hop over really quick to verses uh, 21 and 22. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon man, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in that place. And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from man and brought her to man. Okay, we've got an array of words. Made, create, fashioned, formed. I want you to spend the time to really think about those words. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to flip over to Psalms. And uh, if you get to know me, you're going to know that I oftentimes... Uh, I oftentimes say, oh, this is my favorite passage. Oh, I love this is my favorite. Um, I can't pick favorites, but I do believe that this is probably my most comforted piece of scripture that I go to all the time. And it's Psalms 139. And it's nestled in there just tight. And it's really, it's, it's a, it's a wealth of information. It's like Jesus pulled back the curtain and we're beholding them and we're beholding how they see us and what messages they want to tell us. So the majority of our time right now is going to be spent on Psalms 139. And we're going to intentively, intentionally, excuse me, look at verses 5 through 10. So you ready? Let's read along. Thou hast enclosed me behind and before, and you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. You know, if you think about that for just a minute, just that idea of he laid hands on me. Let's look at verse 10 really quick. Ready? Even there, your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. Now I got to get comfortable for a minute because this is just this is just something so fun to explore together. Okay, here's what we have. We have 
the very beginning, when we are created, God laid his hands on us. He molded, he folded, he purposed, but his hands, his, his hands touched us. You know, we think about the original creation, and so we're thinking that, oh, that's just what he did with them. No, that's not true. He creates every single one of us. And he makes us from things that he has already for us, and he makes them from things that don't exist, and he creates it in us. So he has, from the very beginning, intended for us to understand he touches us. He holds us. I have been fingerprinted by God. His fingerprints are all over me, all over me. The privilege of knowing that that's who he says I am. He says I carry his mark. I carry his fingerprint. Now, the story that I told you about uh, my one son who came in and out of the house um, over a course of a couple years, you know, when somebody found out about his fingerprint, it brought disgrace to him. It hurt him. It had him lose opportunities. But you see, when, when people see that God's fingerprint is all over us, it doesn't matter how you check those fingerprints. It doesn't matter what program you run them through. God does not have a bad record. He has a record. He has a record because every day that you feel his presence, that he touches you and he surrounds you and he molds you, which is everyday process. Every day, you have new proof. You have, you're building a fingerprint record. So every single time that you examine God's fingerprints on you, you're going to see how he touched you in the past. And all of a sudden you are going to have an amazing notebook full of the record of his fingerprints. I hope that this is, that this is kind of uh, getting in there somewhere so that you understand it. Knowing that he created us and knowing that he says that he chose us to put his fingerprints on, then my identity is God says I am touchable by him. He created me to receive his touch. Let's look at this, um, this Psalms portion because it gives a different word. It says, um, laid hands on and it says your right hand will lay hold on me and your hand will lead me I want you to look at these couple things because each one of these touches is different Genesis touches made created fashioned formed those are all touches now in, in, in this portion of scripture we have different kind of touches laid hands on, led with his hands, and he laid hold. Okay. It's funny because if you look at, um, if you look at just a Bible commentary or even just a dictionary about the word in verse 10 of lay hold of me, it's funny because it means, it means uh, to snatch up. He seizes us. So I love the concept of um, picturing God that when we are just about to fall off a cliff, we are just about to get into a dangerous situation. This says he reaches out and he snatches us out of that. So his hands on us are crazy in all these different ways. And when you, when you go to the website and you begin to answer the questions and look deeper, I want you to think about all the ways he has touched you. I want you to sit down. I want you to remember how, how he has made, how he has created, how you have experienced his form and, and his fashioning, how you have experienced him laying hands on you and laying his hands upon you to snatch you, and how his hands have been used to guide you.
you know, I can't help but think of my beautiful grandbabies uh, as, I, as I say this today. Uh, my husband is an amazing papa. He's papa. And right now, the boys, uh, we have four boys that live in town. The four boys are all over him. But I've noticed about him that Aaron touches them in a totally different way than the rest of us do. You know, mama and I, we cuddle, auntie, aunties and uncles, they play. But Aaron has a little bit more. He protects them. Um, we, I, I showed you the little pond we have in the backyard. Well, Milo thinks that's great, but it is three feet deep and that is over Milo's head and he will drown. And so when he's out there with us and he prays with me and he watches the fishies and I hold him really close, but if he starts to make a move toward the pond of getting wet, my husband can snatch him. He can, he can run from the other side of the yard, get to that pond and snatch him up before Milo has a chance to even blink his eye. Um, I don't know if you ever had an experience where your kids were going to do something dangerous. I remember one time, one of my kids did not look before he opened the car door and a car came literally just zoom right by. And if my husband wouldn't have been so quick at grabbing my son, he probably would have been hit by that car in the parking lot. Um, we didn't expect somebody going that fast. We didn't expect somebody to come across the car. But if it wasn't for my hand, for my husband reaching out his hand and grabbing him, my one of my kids would have been hit by a car. So I want you to think about these scenarios. And I want you to think about how many times, how many times, he has laid his hands upon you. I know that this isn't a really long one today. I don't think it needs to be. I think pondering it is going to be the exercise today. Let it sink in. That God's fingerprints are all over you every day. You know what? I'd like to share one more thing with you if you're okay. Uh, let me find it. Check in Luke. Grab your Bibles really quick. And we're going to go to to Luke. I'm coming off the cuff here, so I'm trying to remember the numbers. This isn't something I prepared for today, but it really makes sense today. Um, go to Luke, and we're going to look at the passage where Jesus is being crucified, um, that it is at the very end of it. Okay. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. All right. Sorry, my hands aren't always the easiest to turn pages. All right, I found it. You ready? It is Luke chapter 23. And I want you to look at verse 46. I'm going to read it to you. Oh, I'm so glad that this came to my heart. I want to read this to you. And Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Now, I want you to hear it again, okay? I know that you have heard creation and I know you've heard the statements and all of the stuff, but I want you to see a word in here that I haven't always noticed. Jesus crying out with a loud voice said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Okay. I don't know why it just awakened me right now to realize I have just always looked at that and it's been Oh, he gave his spirit. You know, he was really frustrated. He asked God to take it over. But no, Jesus said, I'm going to put it into your hand. Jesus said, I am going to, I'm going to ask you to put your hands on me. Jesus understood this concept of being touched, of being handled, of being fashioned of being snatched. And Jesus himself on the cross acknowledged this earthly 
definition. This earthly definition, as he was a human hanging on the cross, he, he completely understood this identity sentence. He knew that God said that he was able to be in God's hands. And at the last breath, when he was giving us salvation, when he was dying, when he was following everything perfectly, he said, God, could you just hold me? Take your hand and hold me. He entrusted that God's hands were going to be there. He knew it because he knew that's what Jesus, he knew that that's what God told him. God had told him, just like God has told all of us, that his hands are at our disposal. Guys, I love it when we can find, you know, these little tidbits where, where Jesus, you know, grabs hold of one of the concepts we're learning and he so illustrates it. And when you go do your homework today, please see that there's a lot more verses about how we are in his hands. Please don't skip those today. Um, I really want you to understand his hand and I want you to be able to grow in that knowledge that that's the way it's supposed to be. All right, guys, I love you so much and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for being patient with my voice and, and uh, to try and find that scripture. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.